I'm Marek Lewandowski from Warsaw. I would like to talk a little bit about our jail system, its history, and also the role of how the system, what the system was playing to the mankind, and why we are so ardently need to keep the system in steady state position. The talk will be about this. First of all, I would like to tell you that I will be talking about the history of the Earth. The history of the Earth is built on geological record. Geological record, the more deep in time we investigate it, is handicapped by more bigger and bigger error. So there are always working hypotheses that are subjected, uh, handicapped by the error of unknown uh, magnitude. So many of the facts or interpretation I will be talking about today. So uh, talking about the facts, we, we should always remember that we are dealing with the data of unknown certainty. That's why you always should put some, some margin of uh, confidence to interpretation I will be talking about today. The first of all, I would like to start with the question why a warm Coke makes bubbles, while the cold one does not? And the answer, before I do during the talk, should be sent to my email address, which is shown in blue, and the first good answer will be awarded by the Lewandowski's autograph. That would be a good prize, I think, or a good answer. Next, I would like to explain why we studied the polar zones. Polar zones, first of all, are unique places on the Earth. Some times ago, it was 30, 40 million years ago, temperature on the, on the Earth was differently uh, distributed on the globe than it is today. This 40 years ago, 40 million years ago, in Miocene time, we have had very warm poles and more or less the same world as, as it is now the equator zone. So the difference between poles and equator was much smaller. You can see, however, that this was the temperature distribution in Mesozoic time, it was 60 million years ago, while today we have difference in temperature much, much higher than it was in Mesozoic time. However, temperature on the equator was very much similar to, to, to the temperature today, while on the poles we have temperature, we, are, we, we, we have a temperature much, much lower, by 60 degrees lower, while on the equator it was only 3 degrees difference 60 million years ago. Well, so it means that if the global glaciation vanish, then the temperature should rise on the poles first at the first stages, much more dynamically than it is on the equator. And this is really the true, because you can see the globe and temperature anomaly distributed over the globe. You can see that maximum anomaly, positive anomaly, is on the pole in Arctica. That's why we are studying this zone, because the dynamics of uh, natural processes are the strongest here. 
it is much easier to observe them than uh, uh, on the equator compared to equator. So measurements of temperature, humidity, the pressure on the pole has a crucial meaning for us to understand the global geosystem. From this graph, you can see that the temperature, which is shown here, was much variable during the whole Panerozoic. Panerozoic is a time period from Cambrian, 500 million years ago until today. And you can see the temperature was really variable during this time. And the graph is showing the history of this temperature on the globe, however, with the different time scales. At the very end of this process, the mammals evolved, and finally, when the temperature was very, very low on the Earth, mankind appeared on the, on the scene. In this part of a graph, you can see the temperature between 550 million years ago to some 80 million years ago. So the time is very compressed. But in the following sectors, the time is broader and broader. And today, you can see that the very last sector is the Holocene, with the lower temperature, the lowest temperature in, in the history uh, of the Earth in Phanerozoic time, when the glaciation was the biggest. And then temperatures start to rise up, and it reached the position, it, it reached the position as it is today, and there is a projection, there are scenarios of the, of the temperature rise, which will rise the temperature by two degrees in 2050 and up to uh, some eight degrees, uh, I'm sorry, four degrees in Celsius temperature in the year uh, 2100. And in this time, we will reach the temperature, which is uh, an average temperature for the globe in the whole Phanerozoic. It means we return to the temperature that it was on average on the, on the Earth. We will uh, move from the global glaciation to the normal temperature. It will happen during the next 100 years or so. So this affects perhaps not you, but your grandchildren for sure. The fact is this, that we were born in the coldest periods of the Phanerozoic, with the last similar time being in Carboniferous. But take a look on this part, the Miocene time. The Earth looked like this. So in 100 years, we will reach temperature uh, at which the, the global glaciation is almost vanishing. There were no ice caps except some the Canadian Arctic and Northern Greenland, and the very pole position, to, uh, very uh, close to the southern pole. Antarctica was largely uh, free of ice. So we can find fossils, leaves like hands, which can be found somewhere in this area. Okay? So this is the globe we are going to, certainly within 1,000 years or so, because ice needs time to, to, to disappear. We'll have no ice, no snow on the Earth. But there is a, another time in the Earth history which was very similar to our one. This was Carboniferous. As you can see, the temperature was vary, variating uh, more or less in the same um, in the same manner. So zero is a today temperature, and all these are anomalies, minus and uh, and plus. So it was even 
colder than it is today on the Earth. And it's really true because in the late Carboniferous, 300 million years ago, the southern continent, Gondwana continent, was completely frozen at the latitudes uh, above some uh, 50 degrees south. But the oxygen level in Carboniferous was much higher than it is today. Today we have 20% of oxygen in the atmosphere, while in the Carboniferous time we had some 35. One may say, okay, this is a good level of oxygen because then we will have more energy. Oxygen is absolutely necessary for us to, to, to breathe and to have energy to live. But very recent studies shown that too much oxygen is poisoning. The higher level of oxygen has been found disastrous for our eyes, for our brains, and our lungs. And there is a vast literature about this. Some 50 years ago, premature uh, infants were cured by uh, oxygen uh, rice. And then it we found that more, some of them at least, were simply killed by too much oxygen. At the level of oxygen applied to them was 35 degrees, as it was in Carboniferous time. So, conclusion is this. Ancient Earth was not meant for the human being, and it is only a short time now for the Earth friendly for the mankind. Means we can only live in this temperature at which we were born. There is no chance for us if the temperature will rise much higher or the oxygen level will rise too high also. And well, the more general conclusion, mammals were gaining strength while the global temperature dropped down. Mankind appeared at the end of the evolution when the temperature dropped down to the possible minimum. Possible minimum with the, this a size of the sun as we have today. And we will pass away together with the vanishing ice unless we find a proper means to avoid the catastrophe. This is a good example of what I am saying. This uh, snowy people are simply getting an optimistic message from this guy that no more cold, no future looks, the future looks warm and sunny, and this is in fact a message to us. So let's talk about what governs the climate on the Earth. What are objective forcings and what are the feedbacks? The first, the major factor what, that, that governs the temperature on the Earth is the sun. Here I present a model of the exchange of the temperature within the Earth system. We can see atmosphere and the solid Earth down to the core. There is a very uh, complicated system of exchange energy. But for us today, we are not interesting what what's going on in the in the deep deep Earth. We are interesting what's going on on the Earth's surface because we are living on, on the Earth's surface. Note that uh, whole energy from the Earth is five uh, to ten tetrawatts, while the Sun is giving us much more en energy, ten thousand times more energy from the Sun. This energy is not passing through the lithosphere down to the Earth. However, it remains on the surface, giving us energy for life. But the radiation from the sun caused some problem. The problem is 
in the fact that while radiation arrives to the Earth's surface, it reflects. But the reflection radiation, reflected radiation, has a different longitude of the wave. And the waves are less stronger than, than those coming down to the Earth. So some of them get back because of the green ga greenhouse gases which are present in the atmosphere. And this is greenhouse effect. So the surface of the Earth gets warmer because of this effect. The, 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 the clue of the process is shown in this place. Some radiation are, is getting back to the surface of the Earth. In the Earth's history, which starts from the zero point here and goes until today, the sun evolved in a specific or standard manner, I would rather say. First of all, it was flash up. It flashed up and then dimmed to the level of 80% of present day in energy transferred to the Earth. So it was, in fact, cold sun. In the cold sun, the Earth should be also cold. But it was not the fact, because the Earth had an atmosphere mainly composed of methane. Methane is a highly effective greenhouse gas. So even small radiation arrived to the Earth's surface due to greenhouse effect could keep the temperature similar to that of today. But something happened important nearly two million, billion years ago. The oxygen came into the game. When oxygen came into the game, what has happened? Immediately, methane has been oxidized to CO2. But the CO2 has much lower a greenhouse effect than CH4. When, therefore, CO2 appeared in the atmosphere, the temperature on the globe dropped dramatically and the whole earth turned into the snowball earth completely frozen for the next 300 million years the earth looks like that this was in Huronian time okay but there were some already living organisms cells which contain chlorophyll Chlorophyll is a very a simple, in fact, a chemical product which for, for which CO2 is a necessary food to live. Chlorophyll assimilated CO2 and the plants and the animal form, biological forms which contain chlorophyll, algae for instance, were flourishing on the Earth. Photosynthesis start at that moment. And this was something which was absolutely unique for the Earth. When photosynthesis started, the level of CO2 started to drop down. But sun <coughs> was uh, getting strength more and more because of the natural evolution of the star like this. So summary effect from the greenhouse gas as CO2 dropping down and rising sun, keep the temperature on the Earth steady. It happened sometimes, it was cryogenian, it was about 600 million years ago when the Earth got frozen again but not on the same scale as in Huronian because the sun was bigger. 
and the same happened today. In Pleistocene, we have the next global glaciation at this site, except for Carboniferous. But the Earth couldn't couldn't turn into the um, snowball Earth state because Sun was big enough. So even if there is no CO2 from the point of a, from the point of view of a planet, we have still the same temperature as we have had during a deep Precambrian time, and this is important because. If this is so, it means that there will be no other global glaciation on the Earth. We can only rise the temperature by getting, by giving back all carbon that was deposited in the natural uh, uh, repositories as a rock or the ocean. So the conclusion is the growing sun and its radiation will prevent the Earth from the next glaciation. Then we focus on the carbon, his, uh, carbon dioxide history in the Earth's atmosphere during, during Phanerozoic time. In the Phanerozoic, based on different models, as they were uh, listed here, and different sort of compilation of the measurement of proxies because we don't have any direct method to measure carbon dioxide, but we can use only proxies of this, in, uh, of the, the, the intensity in the, of the, the CO2 level in the atmosphere. We can judge the history of the CO2 variation in the Panerozoic atmosphere on the Earth. We can see here the scale carbon dioxide per per million in volume. Today, we are here. In the Cambrian time, some models showed us 7,000 degree ppm in the atmosphere. So it was absolutely incomparable to what we have today. Today, we almost have no CO2 in the atmosphere. Other models show more or less the same except for this one, but this one is taking another component into the analysis which we omitted for, for our lecture. And you can see time score ternary average. It was 25 more CO2 in the atmosphere than it is today. Okay, so summarizing, we can see that CO2 practically vanished from the Earth's atmosphere during the Phanerozoic and fluctuated globally like, more or less like, like this, down today. And these bars means glaciations in the Precambrian, late Precambrian time, in Carboniferous and today. Today we are expecting one of a few global glaciation events in the Earth's history. Then global tectonics is also a player in the governing the climate on the Earth. I'm sorry, once I get back for a while. And I will explain this term, carbonitiza carbonitization. This is a process of taking up the CO2 from the atmosphere by chemical reactions with the rocks on the surface. The more rocks we have, as it is, as we have a uh, strong origin uh, on the Earth, the more rocks appear on, on the, above the uh, sea level, then the more CO2 is used for chemical reactions, producing, for instance, limestones. In limestones, we have CO2 taken from the atmosphere and deposited to the sea. So a lot of CO2, a lot of carbon, has been deposited in the rocks. While deposited in the rocks, they have to be removed from the, it has to be removed from the atmosphere. The process is clear. Okay, let's take a look for Caledonian orogeny. Uh, in Caledonian orogeny, we also have some minor glaciation and uh, 
this was originally when our continent, continent Baltica, we are actually with Europe on this continent, we, we collided with, uh, with America, present day America. The huge origin here, here, and a lot of CO2 has been taken down from the atmosphere. And the region which is now Sahara Desert in Africa uh, was covered by the ice sheet. And also today, we have a very strong alpine origin with a lot of mountains along the west coast of Americas. We have an alpine belt in Europe. We have, first of all, Himalaya Alpen, uh, alpine belt. All these origin and belts up, uh, and uh, origin belts are forming today taking down a lot of CO2 from the atmosphere, not saying about the, about the plants. We are still, I, all the time, I utilize CO2 to, to transfer it into the energy. So this is the time when we were born at the very specific time when the earth was so cold because normally it was warm, warm with the denser atmosphere, the, the pressure was two, or even some people say three times uh, higher than it is today. It was incredible that the moisture was present everywhere. This was really a difficult planet to live. Thermodynamics of the global ocean. This is another layer, the ocean, the global ocean. And now there is a time to answer my question, why the warm Coke makes a bubble, why the cold one is not. There was a physical law formulated by Henry, as an English physicist, uh, 200 years ago. He found that the gas is dissolved in the, wa in the, in the water, uh, but inversely to the temperature of the water. It means the colder water is, here we have the temperature, temperature, the colder water is, the more gas can be dissolved in this water. But the, by the, the water gets warmer, the gas is released to the atmosphere. And this is also the case to the global ocean. This is the same water as it is in a tap. It has the same property. For the last 50 years, we observe all the time the rising of the ocean heat content. So the ocean getting, is getting warmer. What's going on when it's getting warmer? It's Get back, the, gets back the, the CO2 gets uh, back to the atmosphere. And this is a, a map showing anomaly of the ocean temperature. In the place it is blue, the ocean is cold, so the CO2 may be dissolved in the, um, in the ocean. While in these places, where it is warm, the, the CO2 is getting back to the atmosphere. So the system is rather steady state until man will come into the game, because it is producing, the mankind is producing a lot of CO2. And only 40% of this mankind or artificial CO2 is uh, the could be, can be dissolved in the ocean. The remaining 60% 60, 60 in, remains in the atmosphere. There are also orbital cycles, astronomic cycles, which add to the, uh, to the global climate change. This is the precession, this is obliquity, and eccentricity. 
uh, sometimes they can uh, accumulate the effect of the Earth being close to the Sun, for instance, having a different ob obliquity of, of, the, uh, uh, of the rotation axis, and also different position on the way uh, during the precession with the cyclicity around 22,000 uh, years. When all this effect accumulates, the temperature on the Earth may either drop down or rise up. We can observe the history of this process by investigating ice cores taken from Antarctica and from Greenland. These records are very clearly saying that uh, during the last uh, almost million years, the temperature on the Earth, uh, interpreted from the CO2, the CO2 in, uh, composition or presence in the atmosphere was variable and the variation were very strong sometimes. See, there was a kind of a cycles. The Earth was breathing in geological time scale. At the same time, the mankind uh, Get, was getting strength, evolved better and better until present day uh, human uh, humans uh, stage of the evolution. The temperature was going down and up while there was no industry. So it was very natural process and it, really it is it can be observed on the Earth. However, to then, today current CO2 level is around 400. So dynamics of the CO2 rise has no precedent in the past history on the Earth. The project was called EPICA, so you can find it easily in the internet and you may get familiar with the outcomes or results of this project if you are interested. And finally, human. What we can do to the atmosphere. Here we have an image taken from satellite over northern US at the boundary with Canada, Montana, North Dakota. There are the hydrocarbons deposits which are heavily used by man. Each this point shows you one drilling tower. When hydrocarbons are drilled, then there is an excess of the methane uh, in, the, in, the, in the hydrocarbon deposit, which is uh, uh, not useful for a man. So it is burned down. And all these are flares on the uh, each uh, each rig, each drilling rig or tower. So we see how many unnecessary gas is burned down just because mankind, the, the men, want to get hydrocarbons. Our civilization is based on, and the process that occur in each of these rigs is exactly the same as two milliard year, years ago. CO, uh, methane is uh, oxidized to CO2 and the water. So we prefer to have CO2 than have CH4, uh, CH4 in the atmosphere because methane is stronger, uh, is stronger uh, greenhouse gas than CO2. That's why these flares are burning. And uh, from the bigger distance, you can see bacon oil fields situated here, the same field we have seen just in the previous slides, with a lot of flares burning during the night. So when you ask where this, uh, this artificial CO2 
is coming to the atmosphere to one of the uh, of the source I can easily point there are all hydrocarbons which are drilled by the men all over the world and the flares which are burning okay this is Polish I'm sorry I didn't change it so simply it is saying that we get back to the atmosphere whole deposits uh, of uh, carbon that has been um, accumulated in the lithosphere in the rocks during the million of years in the very fast process the deposition took million years we are getting back in the tens of years that's the difference and this is an example what we are do on the earth uh, of course the uh, communication means um, planes and cars burning the forests are a significant component adding co2 to the atmosphere but but the the uh, sea the transport ocean transport is the most important player in this process uh, yes by doing this we destroy our future but the question is if we should take care about future generations and this is question to you you may discuss this later on should we take care of what will be on uh, of what will be on the earth in the in the next hundred years or not this is after us what are the reasons we should or should not well we have some in the final stage of this presentation we have some scenarios uh, of future uh, development uh, uh, of the, the climate uh, due to human kind, kind impact the natural process which uh, is taking place for the last thousand years is slow global cooling this is a next episode within this last global glaciation so the tent is toward the next glaciation in northern Europe for instance it wouldn't be so so uh, expensive as it was 20,000 20, years ago however it may uh, result in some new glaciers or uh, ice caps which could develop in for instance northern Scandinavia but the men came into the game more or less 100 years ago and then the temperature anomaly rise up immediately and very strongly so this process is driven by Milankovitch orbitally or orbital cycles we were discussing this shortly but the cooling trend has been reversed more or less 100 years ago the red scenario is this it means it will be warmer and warmer on Earth. there is another scenario that we vanish from the earth and our civilization vanish one day and then this scenario will continue but this is as you know impossible at what people are doing what the man is doing he tried to keep the present day environment in the steady state uh, taking care uh, about the temperature we don't want neither warming neither cooling but how to do it you mean the, the, the earth is not a laboratory you cannot place detectors everywhere all over the globe and regulate co2 emission not at all so this green scenario is rather idealistic and to me impossible so the the red scenario is rather or uh, quite possible it is scenario induced by the by the man and see what will happen during the last uh, 10,000 years sea level rise up to 140 meters from the last glaciation 
since 20,000 years ago. Uh, in Europe, the glaciation ended 14, 12,000 years ago. So sea level rise dramatically. But there is still 140 meters left to the state as we have had in Miocene, when the temperature was similar to that that will be on the Earth in 100 years. So to this state, the Eocene state or Miocene state, is uh, the 140 meters is still lacking. And if this, all this ice sheet and ice cap will melt, then the all water from the continents will be added to the global ocean. And then even rise by one meter, will result in Gdańsk to be turned into the Venice, because all this area will be flooded by the water. In turn, Svalbard will turn into Caribbean. This was a, a positive aspect. It would be a positive aspect of the global warming. We will have a new archipelago for the vacation and holidays. The green scenario controlled by the man is simply unrealistic. And the blue scenario called realistic for the short time period, provided we are not on the Earth. So global warming should be fight or not. And my suggestion is to observe and to react uh, accordingly to the situation, to the develop development of the situation. And in the epilogue, I would like to tell you that Americans were, uh, were, for it, uh, were asked uh, about, the, about the climate change. The, if they are concerned about the climate change, and majority answered yes, but also the same amount of people uh, answered that the global warming will harm me personally. It means that much less people believe that the global warming will affect their everyday life. So it means they, are, they are see the life, they, are, they see the earth through the screen of the TV set. It will happen, but probably in TV, not in my, not in my apartment, not in my home. So there is also this psychological aspect I would like to point to you today. Okay, thank you very much. It's time for a ring and time for a break. Thank you for attention. Hope to see you again.